It is mailbag time here on Seattle Seahawks today. I am your fearless leader, Tyler Jones, here with you. Thanks for joining us. You got questions, I got answers. They come from our live shows that we do twice a week. Never miss a moment of Seattle Seahawks today. Subscribe now and turn on your notifications. That way you know right away when we go live and we're bringing in new content here on the channel. So you can be a part of our next mailbag. We can answer your questions in real time. They come from Super Chats and people using the hashtag Seahawks and everything in between. If there's a big move the Seahawks make, we'll go live on the channel. We'll bring you a video as quick as we can. So make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. That way you stay up to date with the latest haptics in your favorite team. Subscribe now. We'll get started with today's show. Beta YT, my guy. Beta, always a pleasure seeing you, man. With the uh, first question in the mailbag today, besides Devin Witherspoon and Byron Murphy, who do you think will be a big role in the Seahawks' success? Great question there, Beta. And I think it's the guy that's been talked about most this offseason. That is Jackson Smith and Jigba. I think JSN is going to have a fantastic season. And it's going to be kind of the passing of the baton, if you will, from Tyler Lockett to JSN. I think we're going to see more of JSN on the outside. I think the volume of catches are going to go up, his impact in this offense. And not to mention, in minicamp, the favorite target of Geno Smith was Jackson Smith and Jigba. So those two are on the same page. I think JSN is going to have a big season in 2024 and will be critical to the Seahawks' success. Jerji writes in, how much more Bobo are we going to see this year? Uh, Jerji, very good question. I love me some Jake Bobo. He's always been a fan favorite of the 12s since he joined the franchise last offseason. And with Jake Bobo, it's pretty simple. Either he takes that next step, right, or he's going to fall behind and other guys like Chenault are going to pass him up on the depth chart. Maybe even D. Eskridge potentially here. We will see more Jake Bobo if he capitalizes on the opportunity. And if we're going to be honest with the folks, it's been kind of quiet about Jake Bobo over the last couple of months. Not saying that he's done anything wrong, but we haven't heard anything of, wow, Jake Bobo just really lit it up and tore it up today in practice. I was hoping to hear more about Jake Bobo, but it's been kind of quiet for him. So hopefully we see Jake Bobo more, but... The indications of what's happened this offseason has been pretty quiet there, so we'll see. Phobia says, possibly trade for Trey Hendrickson. Oof. Trey Hendrickson, Cincinnati Bengals uh, defensive lineman. He has requested a trade that was a couple months ago, but he's reiterated that he expects to stay with the Cincinnati Bengals and play for them this upcoming season, and then probably next offseason he walks. My guess, now I'm no expert on the Cincinnati Bengals, but just from outsider's perspective, is that the Bengals are kind of going all in on this year, more so than the Cowboys with Jerry Jones just saying they're going all in. Um, I think that the Bengals realize they are in a situation this year where they are taking advantage of what they can from the salary cap. They can't pay T. Higgins. They can't pay Trey Hendrickson because all the money that is going to be owed to Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase in the future. So they're going to keep those guys, let them walk next offseason, go get the comp picks for them, and try to replace them that way. So I don't think the Bengals are trading Trey Hendrickson. Now, if they were to trade Trey Hendrickson, I still don't think the Seahawks would be interested at this point because of all the money they've invested in Leonard Williams, bring in Byron Murphy. You still have Jaron Reed there. You still have Draymond Jones, uh, among others there. I I just don't see them making that move. Maybe if they wouldn't have brought in Leonard Williams, they could have made a move for Trey Hendrickson, but I think that time has come and gone. Brian Bosworth, the Boz, writes in, what's your expectations for Boye Mafe this upcoming season? Very good question. Boye Mafe coming off a year where he had nine-plus sacks, set the franchise record for most consecutive games with a sack seven in a row this past year. Boye was fantastic and took a huge step forward in the 2024-2023 campaign. Now looking ahead to this year, My thought process with Boye is that he takes another step up. And we've talked a lot on this program about Mike McDonald, what he's done with the uh, edge rushers over the years, from Clowney to Justin Houston to Kyle Van Noy, 
uh, Adafi Owe, the list goes on and on. He's done a great job. I think Poirier is going to thrive in this defensive system. And one thing that's different about him, compared to all the guys I mentioned, other than Adafi Owe, he's not old. All those guys were older. They're at either the end of their prime or they were over the hill and they still had the years that they did. Boyer, I would say, hasn't even entered his prime yet here in year three. So with that in mind, I think the expectation should be through the roof. Nine sacks minimum for Boyer Mafe this upcoming season if he stays healthy. Do you believe in Boyer? Is he your Boyer? Let us know what you think. It's our pit comment today. Type B for believe. Type D for don't. Weigh in the comment section. Let me know what you think if you're all in on Boyer or not. The Smitty Committee is back. Um, what will Tyler Lockett's role be in the Seahawks offense this year? So when I look at Tyler Lockett, I'm so glad he's back, first and foremost. Um, it was looking a little dicey there with his contract situation, but – What now has transpired, the way they've worked that contract, is that he is going to have a cap hit of $30-plus million next year, so unless they rework it again, in all likelihood, this is probably Tyler Lockett's last season with the Seahawks. So if you're debating whether to go to a Seahawks game or not this year, you probably should go. That way you can say your goodbyes to Tyler Lockett and see him for one last time in a Seahawks uniform. With all that said, you see Tyler Lockett's numbers were down last year. Uh, Had less than 1,000 yards for the first time in four years. Five touchdowns, that was the the least he's had in quite some time. Yards per catch were down. Tyler Lockett is on the downward spiral. No secret about that. It's just kind of reality at this point. I think, JSN, we're going to see more on the outside. Tyler Lockett more on the inside. Tyler Lockett will still have a good year. But I think realistically, he's going to be the Seahawks' number three receiver. And that's okay. That's fine as long as DK and Jay is in, step up and do their part. So that's what I see from Tyler Lockett. Still a very good year. I think he could be the number, the best number three receiver in the league. But I think that's the reality. And we've had a lot of good memories of Tyler Lockett. If this is the last dance for Tyler Lockett, I want to know, what's your favorite memory of Tyler Lockett in his time in Seattle so many different things to choose from. Weigh in the comments section. Tell me what you think. Got time for a couple more questions here. Let's start with Jackson. Nice last name, Jackson. What do you think is our strongest position depth-wise at the moment? It's receiver. Um, with DK, Pro Bowl caliber receiver. Tyler Lockett's been to a Pro Bowl. JSN's ascending upward. This is one of the best receiving cores in football. And you add Noah Fant to the mix, who's a very good tight end. And I think he's been underutilized over the last few years. I think that's the position that stands out to me is that wide receiver group, and there's no reason why all those guys can't have a good season and this passing game really just be rocking. Brian writes in, how do you think the Seahawks will do with stopping the run this year? Brian, this is something that I have uh, cried about, lost sleep over a lot over the last couple seasons, is the Seahawks' inability to stop the run. And I would say... Ryan, that if I were to point to one thing that has cost the Seahawks more than anything else over the last couple of seasons, it's been their inability to stop the run. But I feel optimistic. Byron Murphy's a good run stopper. You got Leonard Williams back. He's a good run stopper. Jaron Reed's got question marks when it comes to stopping the run, but we're going to see him on the field a little less this year. Um, We'll see about Draymond Jones and such, but I feel better about this group and their ability to stop the run. It's going to be much improved, and I think coaching will help a lot as well when it comes to that uh, scheme-wise. Last question from uh, Nick Fury. He writes in hashtag Seahawks, hashtag Papa Seahawk. When Geno Smith decides to leave or retire, do you think Sam Howell or P.J. Walker are good replacements, and could we see them compete for QB1? The answer is no. Um, not good replacements. Sam Howell, I think has a chance potentially to play the Geno role, if you will, would be a stopgap guy until their next guy is ready if they find a young quarterback. But I, I'm very doubtful that either one are going to be that guy. In fact, P.J. Walker, I don't even think it's going to be on the active roster when the season begins, uh, if we're going to be frank with you. So, no, I would be very surprised if that was the case. Subscribe now to Seahawks today. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. We'll see you next time here on the channel.